Yeah, some, some people, people do. Leave me alone. Yeah. Real or nah? Okay, y'all. <laughs> Y'all sit back because this is almost like a this is a little over four a three minute video. If y'all don't like it and everything else, it's not my fault. Foxy said that she wanted me to put it on the show, so I put it on the show because she told me to put it on the show. But man, <laughs> I don't know if this is real or not. I really don't. This 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 falls into the category of I'm kind of hoping that it isn't real. Also, Anna, if you are w still watching the show, this is that moving thing in the background, so you may want to put the phone down and just listen. And anybody else who has um, sensitivity to the, the movement. Sensitive to movement. This story ended yesterday, but it started around 15 years ago. My parents had had a dog by the name of Blinky, the cutest English Cocker Spaniel you'll ever see. They had this from before I was born, so she was always there while I grew up. We lived pretty remote from everything, and my older sister and I didn't get along at all. So for the first five or six years of my life, I considered Blinky to be my best friend in the world. I don't remember many very specific events with her, but I do remember her always being around and by my side. And by always around, I mean she would even come along when I went to bed or the bathroom. We were perfectly happy. That is, until one day my dad pulled a prank on me. And this day I remember very, very vividly. I heard my dad say something to Blinky while he was working in the garden. And I wanted to make fun of him for talking to an animal. But when I tried to, he looked me dead serious in the eyes and told me that of course he talked to Blinky. Why wouldn't he? He then said that Blinky talked to him as well. At first I thought he was joking, but he was was so serious about it and I was young and very stupid. So when he kept at it, I started believing him. When I asked still wearily why Blinky didn't talk to me then, he said she was very shy and didn't dare talk to many people. I think he carried on in the garden after that, but I was left dumbstruck. I went on a walk with Blinky and started talking to her and then began asking her to then eventually begging her to talk to me, telling her that she didn't have to be shy and that I would never make fun of her, trying to help her see that she could trust me. But of course, as you could guess it, Blinky remained silent and I was hurt. I know it may sound petty, but I was a type of kid who had a very hard time getting over things and they would probably be very hurt if things went wrong. And this was especially true because my dearest friend in the world wouldn't trust me while she could my dad with whom she wasn't nearly as close to. So I remember going home and bawling my eyes out that night. And indeed, things didn't get back to the way they were after that. Blinky had shown her true colors apparently and I could never fully forgive her or go back to being the closest of buddies like we were before. I didn't hate her or anything like that and would still occasionally play with her, but the close friendship was over. Some years later, when I was about 11 or 12, Blinky finally did pass away. Something was going on with her kidneys and she was pretty old by this point. I was pretty sad at the time because even though we hadn't been that close anymore, she was still our dog. At that time, I didn't actively think about the talking thing that had caused the initial Rift, which resulted in my world not really falling apart when she passed away. Fast forward to last night. I'm 20 years old now and I went home to see my parents and my older sister was also there. There aren't a lot of times all of us are together anymore, so when that happens, we tend to get a bit nostalgic and talk about memories from when we were younger. Today, for the first time in years, we were talking about Blinky and the three of them were talking about how great and funny and loyal she was. And I mainly listened until at one point I said without thinking that I didn't really like her that much because she wouldn't talk to me. After I said this, my parents and my sister fell silent. That confused me, bringing my attention to what I had just said. And at that point, it all came together in my head, causing the biggest mind break I've ever had. Only then did I understand my dad's joke and the absurdity of its consequences. Of course, if I had actively thought about it, I would have figured it out way sooner. But the blinky could talk thing had just been in the back of my head all this time since since I was young enough to believe it as a passive piece of truth, which had never been questioned or reviewed again until now. So I explained everything that went along with it, and now because of that, my family has continuously made fun of me ever since. Needless to say, I honestly feel pretty stupid.
<laughs> this is why you don't homeschool your children. <laughs> I mean, I don't even think it was the part about that the dog doesn't speak to. Him. Okay. But the analogies and the the I thought we was better people than that. I thought we was closer than that. But you would rather talk to my dad than me. I thought we was closer than that. It's like, dude. No, I... Marlon, the dog died when he was like 12. That means this is something that was told to him when he was like seven, seven, eight years old. Yeah. So the problem is, he wasn't very he wasn't a bright kid. I get that. But he was also he was probably raised to trust whatever his parents say. So it was stuck in his head. And where as from an adult, you know, it's funny and it's just you just having a moment joke with your kid. But your kid is very emotional and not, you know, it's just not there. Right. So you did that. Didn't think nothing else of it because who would? And then the kid, you know, went about the way. But that's why I said, you know, I know I was being kind of tongue in cheek when I'm like, this is why you don't homeschool your children. But seriously, don't home don't homeschool your children. All right, they need to be socialized because shit like this would have been fixed on the playground. You know what I'm saying? You need. We don't we don't talk um, about this. we don't talked about this for a while now. <laughs> free free range kids, don't do it. Don't don't. <laughs> Don't your kids need more than you. Hard for you to hear this, parents, but it's the truth. You're so scared of the world, you're trying to keep the kids away from the world, and then you can end up with a kid that their naivety of youth creates a dumbass adult. You know what I'm saying? You this this is stuck with this this person so they were grown because and they ended up, you know, it's it's just silly. But I think it's real because I could definitely see how this could happen, especially to a young child, you know, because like my kids, when they're you no, know, because I tell my I, I force my kids to challenge me. But still. My youngest, whatever I say is gospel. But all three of them were that way when they were the, when they were at that age. And then I started bringing them out of it. So this child is at that stage where whatever dad said. It's what it was. And since dad didn't break character, he did it with a straight face. Well, that, that never been this family. I mean, trust me, is we because I I done told them a long time ago. I, I ain't right on every damn thing. So everything that I'm giving you right now is I mean, now don't get me wrong. If it's factual facts that I know, yes. But you got to talking about from the standpoint of a of a second grader. Yeah, if it's facts of facts, then yeah. But and I don't know. I I don't. I've never went your route of telling them to always challenge me. But I've always said, you know, you you really need to stand up for what you feel is right. Even I mean, I don't, I mean it ain't like it ain't like gladiator school. But we just walk down the hall and pick fights with each other. I'm, I'm saying it's like, yeah, no, you know, not that. No, what I'm saying I, is, it's, 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 it's always a matter of, I believe. And I think you've heard me say this before. I consider myself to be a leader. Okay, I lead my house, I lead my family, and I lead people outside of here as well. So to me, if you fashion yourself a leader, you have to be able to be questioned have to so i raise my children where we will like just randomly i'll just pick the opposite end of an argument just to do it and and have them stand on their own and, and push back against me and i just think it's a great thing and now my my eldest one she'll definitely give me a run for my money and my middle one by the time she finishes high school i'm in trouble so, you know, but that's what I want. I want them to be intelligent and I want them to be tacticians when it comes to how they interact with people. And nobody can tell you who you are because you've already looked into your soul and you know 
who you are. And you know how to stand up for yourself without having to put hands on people. You know, but of course, when it comes to that, you got to do that too. But yeah. Um, there are ways of writing comments that listen. It's not easy, but if you're in listening mode, you avoid the worst egocentric and bigoted remarks. <sighs> they have a you two have an algorithm that I probably need to set up because I'm going on vacation soon. So yeah, y'all gonna get a whole bunch of replays. Um, that you could put the algorithm where you could put certain words in that when you type those words into the system, it won't into the comments. It won't um print. What if that's what Anna? No, because I haven't got it set up. I don't know what Anna's issue is. Um, <clears throat> y'all do talk. Yeah, I don't to know us. about that. Don't know. Yeah, that's a level of censorship right there, bro. It, but yeah, I get you, it though, because some comments you don't want sitting on your platform. Well, you know, when I do the premiere thing, when I do premieres, I literally, I, you know, I do a replay, but I put it as a premiere so people can still do comments. I still have to monitor it just in case somebody comes in there and say something stupid. But I want to get to the point where it's like I put a premiere on, but I'm on vacation. I want to chill out. I don't want to be watching the show. Oh, oh, yeah. Then don't do it as a premiere, bro. Because why have the comp? Because the comment thread doesn't save that I'm aware of. So it don't. No. Okay. So yeah, because if you're not going to be there to see it, you end up missing out on that anyway. You know. So yeah. I, but I feel you though. Like. My big thing is when people put some of those really just just horrible comments on a video just because they can, you know. Yeah. Now you got to go back and delete them, and it's just it's and, I, and I don't even understand that. Like I'm going to delete them. Like I don't. I, I honestly re really like to take the people to the side and go. Wh what did you think you was gonna get from it? It, it is it's literally an individual enjoyment because this shit is not funny. You're purposely being brutal. You're per and I and honestly, if you're doing it again, if you got to make yourself feel better, if you got to feel yourself, if you got to make yourself feel up to put somebody down, you still ain't shit. I mean, I'm sorry to have to tell you that, but you're not. You're you're really not. You're you're not shit. I mean, you are shit. If you have to make somebody lower than you to make yourself feel better, yeah. somebody should have told if you. If you get pleasure from inflicting ago. pain, that's the problem. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you, and I know there's those S and S, S and M people out there that be like, "No, don't be kink shaming." Yeah, I think something's a little wrong with y'all too, but. Um, do your thing. <laughs> you know, man. Did he not have friends with dogs? We don't know because we don't. He may have been homeschooled, like what he said. So they say he was raised, you know, out the way or whatnot, in remote areas. So he might not have had anybody but his sister. And he said he had no good relationship with her. If this is real, the OP had some things to work out. Yeah, some in, and um, abandonment issues. You're right, Thiz. When they're under school age, you have to be very careful what you say because it sticks. At some point, you have to get them to question you. Right. Because cause... <laughs> Okay. Sorry. I, I, I'm learning to have the tough conversations. That's my... 2023 thing that I've been doing, the tough conversations that you have to have, and the environment that we're going through right now, in a way. Parents, your ass ain't fucking always right. You're probably not always the best environment for your child. I mean, and I'll give you a hint on if you know if you are the right environment for your child. If you always see issue, always, that's your reason for being in that child's life. Always see issues and you're protecting them from everything. 
Always there's a problem. Always there's an issue. Always there's an enemy. You're not the right environment to be. I'm talking to people that like to homeschool. <laughs> You're not it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, like I'm, if you homeschooling, like if you homeschooling because um, your community has been victimized by a gun, you know, shooting at the school. I could see that reaction. You are homeschooling because your child has, you know, been bullied severely. You know what I'm saying? Because every every school, every grade has those one or two kids that just catch hell every day, right? <laughs> so, um, so I could see that. Um, but if you're homeschooling because you want to control what type of information right. they get access to. If you're trying, if you want to homeschool because you want to keep them in the bubble, right? You're afraid that if they deal with non-believers, that you know they they'll they'll be corrupted or, or whatnot. And I'm just like, you, you're 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 wrong. And I know you're gonna say I'm wrong for saying you're wrong, but really you are wrong you're because wrong. God God didn't I, I, not that I'm aware of. Did he say take your child or hide them under a bush? You know what I'm saying? It's like hiding your talents. You're not supposed to do that. You know, teach your child, prepare your child. Um, you have your belief system, teach them, teach them so that when they go out into the world, they can test the world against their beliefs. And then if and, and it'll win out. Right. If it's if, if it's right, it'll win out. You know, but I get it. Being a parent is scary. It really is. But. Do you want them to be prepared for this world so that they can function? Or do you want for the first time when you're not around, because one day you won't be, that they break? Because they never got the tools. I've said this to so many parents, and, and I learned it the hard way. It didn't happen to me. I've just seen a lot of friends and family. When their kids go off to college and they butt fucking wild, and then you sit them down and go, Why are you acting like this? You didn't act like this at home, but then you get the I didn't get to do this, and 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 I didn't never heard about this, and I didn't even do this existed, and blah blah blah, and everything else. And then I got into the world off under my parents. And boom, you doing some of the most dangerous crap you've ever done in your life because you didn't know it was dangerous. Nobody ever told you these things. Your kids are not going to be perfect. Tell you that all night. I, I raised five. No damn well, my, none of mine is perfect. But in the best product that we don't put out there, and I've always told yeah. them, you ain't all look. I hate to tell you this, sweetie. I, I years like ten years ago. Sorry, so this is not brand new. Because, but I remember having a talk with one of my daughters, and told them, um, "Who the hell says you always got to be happy about a situation? That's not how this works." I'm, I'm and I'm just, I'm sorry. You're going to have to get through some things, fair or unfair. You just have to figure out how you go get through it, because that's my job. I have to just get you through it. But I can't protect yeah. you from everything. That's not realistic. I can't. Nobody can. I'm a grown woman. Grown woman. I'm a grown man. <laughs> and my mom is still alive. She can't protect me from everything. That's why I take the system that I the approach that I take, man. Because I'm like, I'm a, I am very protective. I am very overprotective of my girls. I ain't gonna lie, but I make sure that I push them to challenge and think and weigh consequences and all of those things because I can't live your life for you, right? I, I, I my job as a parent isn't to keep you from making mistakes. 
My job is to protect you or keep you from making the mistakes that you can't come back from. Right. So in order to do that, I can't raise you like sex doesn't exist. No, I'm going to teach you what to be aware of, what the dynamics are of an overarching level of what just, you know, how to protect you. I can't act like drugs don't exist. Right. I'm not going to. I, I told my girls, even though I didn't do drugs growing up, you know, I told them, I was like, look, people are going to tell you that drugs are fun and they feel good. Guess what? They do. The problem is you cannot beat a chemical. So how a chemical affects your friend does not mean that's how it's going to affect you. So once you put that into you, once you introduce that into your world, into your vessel, you don't know the reaction. And it's out of your control at that point. So I just want you to think. Right. Look at the people who are doing the things that you say you want to do, because it's nothing new under the sun. Look at the people who have done the things that you think and that you want to do and then ask yourself, is that the life you want? And then you move. I give that advice to people about marriage and people say I'm wrong, though. No. They're like, hey, man, should I get married? I'm like, this is my advice to young men, because I can't tell women what to do on this one. I'm like, fellas, this is what I want you to do. I want you to look around all the guys you know, your age, that are married. Don't look at me. Don't look at your daddy, your uncles. Look at the guys your age that are married. How many of them are happy? Because see, you pick a circle that's a lot like you. So if your whole circle ain't nobody happy, I'm not saying you can't be, just saying the odds ain't in your favor, dog. <laughs> you know what, now, see, that, that I would take a different take on. I'm sure you would. Most people don't like the way I put that, but I'm just well, like, well, I would rather fewer people get married than more people get married if you ain't ready for it, because this shit's hard. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? This could be some of the greatest stuff, greatest experience of your life, but it's going to you up. So yeah, like, this, is my, this is my take <laughs> on that. Do you want to change because of your circle? You want to change your mind, sorry. You want to change your mind about marriage because of your circle or do you need to change your circle? Do well, that's not, not always the case. I don't know. Because if I that's what I'm saying. You look I at need, the, you need, look at the need, a grouping, not at, like I need you to look friends. at your group. I need, to look, I need you to look at your group real quick. Not you. Right. I'm, I'm saying in general. But I'm saying you chose your group. Yeah, and that's my problem. <laughs> You you but literally no, no. you literally chose a group of if and I'm going with your analogy. You literally chose a mm -hmm. group of people who are in a marriage that they're not happy in. No, you didn't. You chose a group. These are your friends. Some are married, some are not. Keep talking. Right? These are your friends. Some of them got married. Right? So I'm not saying. Go get some married friends and then see what the, 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 the sample shakes out. It's more of you already have the friends. They're living their lives, you know, but your circle is a bit of a reflection of yourself. It's not who you are. So it's not determinative of what you'll get. But just look at it and ask yourself, OK, what are the odds is going to work out for me or is that the way I want it to be? And you got two ways to go from that point. Either one, you move ahead and you go ahead with this marriage thing because you know this is right for you. But then you need to be assessing what kind of a partner you're going to be because you might need to do some growing really, really fast. Right. Or you look and you be like, maybe this just isn't the I'm not mature enough for this yet. Right. So that's that's the point I'm trying to get at. at Marlon is because it's not determinative. Like you can have eight friends that are married and seven out of eight of them are are just horribly miserable 
And then you get married and you have the most wonderful marriage in the world because you did better math. You got a better pairing. You got a better match, you know, but um, you're playing odds. See, but that that again, that's my that's what I'm saying is I would not want your decision to get married, to take a job, to move to another state, whatever, to be determined on your circle of friends. You have to do it's not what, determined. How is it not determined? You said it's determined. No, I said this is not determinate. I'm saying you look at it and you play the odds. You could win. You could beat the house. Why not? I'm just saying. All I'm telling is make sure you're taking a real assessment of whatever it is you're trying to do. Like, if you're going to move to another state, like, let's say that. Let's use that. You're going to move to another state because things ain't really working out where you're at. Hold on for a second because these two damn people getting on my nerve. Yes, I did say grown woman. That was a mistake. He is Parker. I heard him say it. And before they was ready for it, they have another generation of teens. But Parker is laughing at me. And now Ella is saying, Marlon be ignoring us, baby boy. Ella, I am not ignoring you. I heard myself despise myself as a grown woman. I know it was a mistake. Theus, please move on. I'm good. I ain't got nothing to say, bro. I was just trying to clarify that point we were talking about. Like, I'm not saying that what your friends are doing is what you're going to get that outcome. But you're using it as all. Not one of them. Right. Yeah. Because you have a shared personality. I mean, there's there's things about you that match up or else this wouldn't be your circle. You're not the same as your friends, so you won't have the same outcome as your friends. But you got you playing odds. That's all. You run with a really mature group of friends that about their business and they focus and they're good, you know, relationship type guys. You probably have a lot of good relationships around you. you But you said change your circle. Well, if you chose the first circle, what you going to do with the new circle? What you going to be the one knucklehead and the rest of them are good? Now you the outlier. (laughs) You know, it's not as easy to just do that. You know, you can't run from who you are.